Hey YouTube, sorry about that. I had to redo this entire video because some fucker decided to call for some telemarketing company. So I hate that. And I hate redoing this video, but I'm gonna do it anyways because you know what? Fuck it. So anyways guys, <laughs> for the last time I'm last time I said this, I'm doing a collaboration not clap why do I keep saying collaboration? Is that look like, like multiple people at once? This is a comparison video of fusion monsters. That's what I meant to say. Stupid fucking telemarketers, I just wanna kill them. And anyways, so the first thing we're gonna do about fusion summoning monsters is about these two. We're gonna be starting off with comparing um, their levels, their attributes, and their attacks, and their effects, and their fusion conditioning the most. So right now we got two of the, of the nominees. We got Shiberta and we got Cat Dancer on stage first. Now these two have one thing in common that is similar to another. They require the same number of art certain monsters in their fusion conditionings. Which means she requires two melodious monsters and she require and Cat Dancer requires two Luna Lights. However, she is a, a level seven monster, dark, and twenty four hundred attack and two thousand defense. While Shaberta is a level seven or level six monster, light monster level six monster, light type, fairy, and same ability, same power. So same attacks and defense from these two. But both of them are very extremely big, are very extremely different. This one can bash up to three cards from your opponent's graveyard and gets power from it. This one can attack multiple times, and it can deal. And when she declares an attack, she deals you a hundred damage. Sorry, guys, if I'm using Vanguard reference because I've been playing Vanguard mostly in Yu-Gi-Oh. So, a hundred damage to your opponents. So. And the one thing about her is you have to sacrifice a Luna Light monster to get that ability, and she can't be she cannot be destroyed by, cannot be destroyed by battle. Can't be destroyed by battle. <laughs> Sorry, cannot be destroyed by battle. So unlike Shiberta, who can be who can be targeted and destroyed, Cat Dancer cannot be destroyed by battle, but she can be, still be targeted. So that's the sad part is between these two. Now that's for them. And I got rid of the last two other copies of them. So the next one we also have is Bloom Deva, the Moya's Choir, with Luna Light Panther Dancer. Now, the similarities of these two are the same, like I said, the fusion, the conditions to fusion summoning these two. She requires one Maestra monster, Malia's Maestra, and also one more Malia's monster, while Panther Dancer requires a Cat Dancer and one more Luna Light monster. But the difference between these two are their attack. There's everything. She's a light. She's a dark. She's a level uh, level seven six monster. She's level eight. Oh, sorry guys. She's a thousand attack and defense. She is twenty eight attack and 12, twenty five for defense. So she's a little stronger than Bloom Diva. But their abilities are almost intertwined. Now for Bloom Diva, we have the ability to. That she can't be targeted by, or she can't be, she cannot be destroyed by card effects, or by card effects, or destroyed by battle, and you don't take no damage involving the battle with this card. Instead, your opponent takes more damage equal to the difference between her and your monster's attack. But there's one drawback: it has to be a special summoned monster in order to activate that skill. So. That is the downside to Bloom Diva, but she's I thought she was more defense, but she's more of an attacker. So that is one thing. She does retain some of Amazon Swordwoman's abilities. Well, as Panther Dancer, I have to get another copy of her because it's all new to me and the text is so fucking small. Okay, what she does in her ability, the conditions are met. Now the one thing she has one thing in common with Bloom Diva is that she cannot be destroyed by battle. Or by your opponent's card effects. Ugh. And then once per turn during your opponent's main phase, you can activate this effect for the rest of the turn. For the first time, each monster your opponent controls will be destroyed by battle, and now it's not destroyed. So that's the same way for so for the Cat Dancer, Leo Dancer, and Panther Dancer, their their opponent's monsters cannot be destroyed by battle for that turn, but their abilities can kick in. Th this card can attack multiple times, twice for twice each. And when this when this when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, it gains plus two hundred attack until the end of the battle phase. So it gains more power by attacking. However, it can attack multiple times compared to Bloom Diva, but she cannot be she cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects. 
while she can be still be targeted by by or she, while she can still be destroyed by the battle. I'm sorry, like that's a bad cover there. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, but yeah, so that's a little bit different in the fusion conditioning. Plus, the abilities are a little slight more advanced, but I like them. I can't really complain about them too much. And then for the final one, we're also having. The newer versions, we have Leo Dancer and Bloom Prima on stage. Now, Bloom Prima, to me... Oh, uh, before I get into that more, I'll just compare to them. She is a level 7 monster, and she's a level 10 monster. And Leo is a level 10. Now, her attack points are 1,900, defense is 2,000, while this one has 3,500 3, and 3,000 defense. Attack and defense. 3,000 defense. However, their fusion conditions are a slight bit different, but they're almost in intertwined in the similarities of fusion summoning. Bloom Prima requires a Maestro monster the same way as Bloom Diva was. But however, she requires also gets one or more Maluya's monsters. And the reason why she does that is because is because for every fusion material monster that was fused to summon Bloom Prima, she gets an additional 300 attack power and is continuous at all times. And for that turn as well, uh, this card can attack twice during each battle phase. So that to me is a a plus, I guess you could say. And whenever um, Bloom Prima is destroyed by battle by car by battle by card effects, you can get one million monster back from the graveyard and add it to your hand. Now, while as Leo Dancer or Leo Dancer's ability is, she requires a Luna Light Panther Dancer. And two Luna Lights. So, it doesn't have that one or more um, a fusion condition that Bloom Prima has. Leo Dancer just has, you know, two Luna Light monsters for her. Now, her ability is... She cannot be targeted by... She cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects. So, she can't... So, that's the one thing that she does have. She cannot be destroyed by battle or destroyed or targeted by your opponent's card effects. But she can still be destroyed by battle. That just kind of sucks. And this card can make a second attack during each battle phase. So that's why these two have shared similar interests. They both can attack twice in the same in the same turn, each each battle phase. So that's one thing these guys have very similar abilities on. And then once per turn, at the end of the damage step, this, if this card attacked a monster, you can destroy all special summon monsters your opponent controls. Which means, if Leo Dancer actually goes through, and she destroys a monster, she can destroy all special summon monsters your opponent controls. And since, um, the dance, this is why these two are so, like, enemies and friends at the same time. It's very chaotic, because these guys rely on special summoning. Leo Dancer can just fuck you over in the ass, fuck you in the ass for that one. But overall, guys, that, these two do share a very similar interest, whether it's attacking twice... Or the fusion conditionings, which is more the comparisons. But I think that's pretty much all I really need to say because I'm running out of a bit of a, more collaboration ideas on this one. But overall, guys, you know, that's why some people like me choose to play three of them. Just because it does share a little bit of interest. Let me just get something uh, going on here. So we have all these in here. Alright, so we do have Sherberta. The Cat Dancers. So the one thing we'll say about these two overall is that their attack points and defense points are very similar. Their fusion conditionings are very similar because they both require um, two certain R-type monsters to summon them. But their abilities are way off and their their levels are very much different and their attributes are very different. So and the thing is we don't have any more we don't have no more support for Luna Lights until the next set comes out. So this is all we're kind of working with right now and working like their magic. So that's one of them. And then for Bloom Diva, the queen of all music, and her counterpart. The Panther Dancers. Uh, let's get these guys in here. Ugh, shit. 
Okay, guys, I am not having much luck here today. This is not... But like I said, guys, this is my very first um, comparison video. So don't don't get me don't kill me yet on the spot. So anyways, and now for Bloom Diva and Panther's similarities are they both cannot be destro destroyed by Carnifex. But the difference is Bloom Diva cannot be... Well, that's the thing. They both cannot be destroyed by Carnifex or by battle. But Diva can be, cannot be destroyed by battle. Panther can, which is kind of sad. But the cat dancers can attack multiple times, as as long as your opponent has monsters and they can't be destroyed by, destroyed by battle that turn. So that's one thing. And the difference between cat dancer and panther dancer is that cat dancer actually inflicts 100 damage. Panther can only gain 200 attack during the battle phase, or anytime she destroys the opponent's monster. And then for the final one, we have. It, Bloom Diva, or Bloom Prima, and Leo Dancers. Now, these two ladies have a lot of things in common, actually, compared to their um, lower counterparts, their other counterparts. These two have... Um, yeah. So, two things in common. One, they can both attack twice in the same turn. The only difference is Leo can destroy all your opponent's special summon monsters. And Bloom Prima's power, powerful power is she can add one million monster from your graveyard back to your hand if she is sent to the graveyard. So that's one thing. But overall, guys, I think we all can definitely agree that this deck revolves around the one card that makes everything in our generation a lot hella better. Polymerization. And now back in the day, there used to be super polymerization, but that, that card got banned because people were just abusing it like shit. And I might do a Luna Light deck profile for you guys. I've seen a lot of deck profiles that revolve around Luna Light as well, but it just kind of depends how the comparison is. But yeah. Overall, guys, these two share very similar interests in each other, and they're very opposites of each other. Because one side is of the light, the others are from the creatures of darkness, which explains why they rely on the moon and there's some rely on the music and the the light and the music, which is why I'm calling this collab video the the starlight, the moonlight melodies, because these are two are very powerful and these six themselves are very strong and independent women are very strong women. And to me, I think they're pretty much cool. And they both share the same interest because their users are from different dimensions, but they're the same person, basically. Very different people, but you know what I mean. But anyways, guys, this is the best collaboration video I can do at the moment. And so go ahead and leave a comment down below. And let me guys, and tell me what you guys think of this little collaboration, or not collaboration, this um, comparison video. And just give me a bit, bit of an insight about these two, because... Luna Lights and Melodiuses do share some similar interests. Now, I don't know if you guys feel the same way because due to the fact they're very different archetypes, but if you look at their effects carefully and their fusion conditionings, they do have some similarities to them. So, let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section down below, and let me know what you guys think about this video, and remember to subscribe, th thanks this video, thumbs up for it, and, you know, all that good stuff. So, anyways, guys, I'm Siren Frost, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye!